Like today, 19th century factories were built to serve specific needs and to have close access to transportation. The Seneca Cayuga Canal and the railroad depots drew companies to build on the lakefront. Malt houses, like this one owned by Samuel Nestor, had tall stacks to aid in drying barley that had been germinated. The wall and window treatments gave the factory personality. Begun in 1888, Herendine Manufacturing made boilers and radiators. The factory was on the lakefront to use water as a resource in the foundry and for access to the railroad for receiving coal and sand. In 1885, the Phillips and Clark Stove Company moved from Troy to Geneva. It was on Evans Avenue at the foot of Seneca Lake near the canal and railroads. Later, it became the Andes Furnace and Range Corporation. The Geneva Preserving Company was the first of several factories to can fruits and vegetables. It was on North Street near the New York Central Railroad line. This building burned down in 1912 and the company rebuilt in the same location. In 1892, Patent Cereals moved to Geneva from Brooklyn to be closer to grain crops and for better transportation. The large complex produced everything from wallpaper paste to breakfast cereals. The new Lehigh Valley Railroad Depot in 1893 on the north side of town attracted new industries. Land was available for development and railroad spurs could be built directly to loading docks. Geneva Cutlery produced straight razors and later kitchen knives and utensils. Business was good enough that the factory expanded numerous times and added a third floor. The three-story plant was fairly narrow and much of the light came from tall windows on all four sides. Today, the building is owned by Brandon and Amy Phillips, who make furniture on the first floor and rent the second floor for weddings, concerts, and other events. Fan Bowen Boat Company moved from Auburn to the lakefront in 1909. They had water access to test their boats and engines, and were also across the street from the New York Central Railroad Freight Depot. Standard Optical, which later became Sheron Optical, was on Lyceum Avenue in the northwest corner of the city. They made lenses, frames, and optical equipment. Unlike Standard Optical and Geneva Cutlery, the American Can Company was built horizontally. The sawtooth sections of the roof were skylights to illuminate the factory floor. The new Echo plant had a similar horizontal plan, but with window walls. It was built on a railroad line, but also had plenty of loading docks as trucks began to replace trains. 19th century downtown Geneva was a mix of residential and retail buildings. Many were wooden structures, but there were brick buildings as well. Fires and demolition destroyed many of the early buildings. By the 1920s, downtown streets looked much like they do today. Business owners have always tried to stay modern. Haviland's Pharmacy gave their exterior a new look with brick, black structural glass, and Art Deco lettering. National Chains had a presence in downtown Geneva. In 1929, S.S. Kresge purchased 2830 Seneca Street and tore it down for a modern store. The new store had a cleaner look on the outside and was more spacious on the inside. Traditional grocery stores, like George Haskins at 49 Seneca Street were full service. Customers gave their list to the clerks who filled the orders. Most of the goods were behind counters on either side of the store and customers stayed in the center. In the 1940s, supermarkets, also called grossaterias in the early days, changed the way people shopped. Large windows and the new invention of fluorescent lighting made the stores bright and inviting. Shopping was self-service and customers could move through the aisles on their own. In the 1960s, new buildings began to replace the old. In 1966, Lincoln First Bank on Seneca Street replaced their very traditional brick building with a modern structure. The National Bank of Geneva was on the opposite corner, and they too put up a new bank. The modern style of architecture rejected all influences from the past, such as classical windows or decorative trim. Business owners who didn't or couldn't replace their buildings opted for makeovers. 22 Castle Street is a good example. Owners covered up the 19th century facades with space-age metal to look more like the new plazas that were being built. Fortunately, this fad passed, and owners have gone back to the original facades. Downtown businesses and shoppers alike 
have embraced Geneva's traditional architecture. Thank you.